I was 20 years old. I had left home when I was 16 years old and decided to explore the world and see what I could find. I have been in Texas and Louisiana most of my life. I have been raised in Louisiana for the most part. I went from Missouri to New York to California and anywhere in the United States I could have decided to go. Finally, I decided to go home. Well, up until then, I had been staying in Oklahoma when I received a phone call from my mom saying that she might be dying from cancer. I came to find out later that she actually wasn't. She just wanted me home. I was hitchhiking through Oklahoma and was near the Chickasaw National Park. In two days, I hadn't been able to catch a ride, sticking out my thumb and doing everything, but nobody stopped. So, I said her well and pitched a tent in the National Park. I decided to explore so, and I followed the paved road until I got into the camping area. There was a fire pit, off a little ways from the road, and it was a clear area. There were picnic tables, so I decided that's where I was going to camp for the night. I decided to explore it a little bit and follow a deer trail into the woods. As I was walking, I looked to my left on the ground, and there was a hawk laying there with no head, as if it had been burned off. An eerie feeling came over me, but I brushed it off, and just may put it to a side as maybe it's being paranoid. I already had some paranormal experiences, but never came across one word involved animals. So I walked away and went back to the area that I decided to pitch my tent for the night. I sat there until it started getting dark and I set my tent up. I left the tent flap open because it was a very cool afternoon. Finally, night came. The street lamps that were along the pay of row came on. The lights were actually good enough to where I could actually read a book. At that time, I was reading Anne Rice, Queen of the Damned. As at the time, I was loving to get a creep before I went to sleep. After reading for a little bit, I got sleepy. I reached up to zip up my tent flap and looked over at the street light that was directly in front of my tent. Standing there, directly under the street light, was a creature that was just as tall as the light itself. Well, maybe not as tall, but maybe a couple of inches directly underneath it. Its hair was very, very long, and it looked a little hunched. I couldn't see any eyes, because the hair seemed to be there in front of his face. It was all in black as far as I could tell, but what little skin seemed to stick out was white as chalk, and what little bit of skin I could see was its hands, which clearly went past its knees. The hands were just hanging there. Its nails were black, very black, so dark it seemed to absorb the night. It just stood there, and it seemed as if the air surrounding it was vibrating. There was a type of static it seemed to be in the air. But don't get me wrong, I was very startled and afraid, I didn't know what this was. Then, suddenly underneath the hair, I could see white start to show. It was as if this creature was like, smiling at me. It stood there for a very long time. Finally, as I was looking at it, something came over me. Now you may not believe me. You might say this story isn't true, but I know that it happened. I know that it happened to me. I grew angry. I grew very angry. I felt a rage inside of me, and it grew very strong. I stared the creature down. I got out of my tent, stood up, and I looked straight at it and said, I'm not afraid of you, and you have no power over me. It seemed to make the creature laugh, and all that did was make me even more angry. I stood my ground and I again told it, I'm not afraid of you and you have no power over me. I stood there staring at it for what seemed like the longest time, white hot rage growing inside me, when all of a sudden I heard a loud snap behind me. I turned around quick to find out what the noise was. There was nothing there, and a thought suddenly occurred that the thing's probably behind me now. I turned around again 
and looked towards the street light, and it was no longer there. I bundled up in my sleeping bag after it disappeared. That night as I slept, I had a horrible nightmare at the creature standing over me, laughing with a toothy grin. The next morning, I packed up my stuff and looked towards the street light. There was just nothing there, but I swear that it looked like there was blood on the street lamp pool. I no longer had that anger that I had at the, the night before. Now, I was very scared. So I gathered up all my stuff and got out of there as quick as I could. I've never been back to Chickasaw National Park ever since. A year ago, I went camping in an old state park in upstate New York. It was adjacent to a Revolutionary War cemetery. I was walking my dog when I happened upon it. My teenage son was back at camp, and I looked around the old headstones, mostly from the 1830s, when there was a very bad outbreak of cholera that killed at least 30 children from the town. It was late afternoon, and I lost track of time. The dog and I turned around, but the way I came in seemed to have disappeared. I came across a sign I had not seen as I was coming in. All the graves were full, and no new graves were to ever be made here, because in the late 1890s, a damn grave, all the way upstream, had somehow come completely unearthed. The townspeople literally had to pit bodies back in coffins, many of them not replaced correctly, and rebury the dead, many of them children, to the point that they decided to close the cemetery and leave well enough alone. When I finally got back to camp, by going through the brush, my son and I had dinner, and then I was sitting by the campfire. A man was walking by, and we said hello. He came over, and we were making small talk about the town. I asked him about the graveyard. He said he had a friend who had an experience with what they believed to be one of the children from the cemetery. This is what he told me. Behind the elementary school, near the cemetery is a running track. I saw from the cemetery, it was really close. This guy had a bad back and would use the track to power walk. He brought a seven-year-old stepson with him because the boy could play in the sandbox behind the school and he could see him from the back of the track without losing sight of him. When they got to the playground, there was a little girl playing in the sandbox. The boy ran over to the girl and sat down with his toys playing in sand. The guy can see them quietly playing side by side. When he was done, he sat down on the picnic table by the children to cool off. He couldn't see little girl's face, but she was wearing a white dress, leather boots, and her hair was curled in ringlets. He thought it was weird, but since it was a Sunday afternoon, maybe she had gone to church early that morning. He didn't know, but then thought it was weird that there weren't any parents around, and then thought as she might be from the house near the park. After a few minutes, he asked the girl, Do you live nearby? She kept playing and said, Who who? Between closed lips. He then asked her if her parents were coming to get her, and she said, Mm-hmm. Again, between closed lips. The guy thought that maybe she wasn't supposed to talk to adults, so he didn't bush it. He told his stepson to say goodbye to the little girl, and he looked at him, like, huh? But the guy just thought he didn't like playing with the little girl. It was getting to be dusk, and he looked around for her parents, but then he just left. As they were walking to the car, he looked back and she wasn't there, so assumed she also went home. They get into the car, and feeling weird about the whole encounter, he said to his stepson, How did you like that girl? The boy looks at him and says, who? And he says, the girl you were playing in the sandbox with. And he says that there was no girl with him in the sandbox. The man who told me that story said that his friend nearly lost it. He realized that he hadn't seen her face. She didn't talk, and his son didn't even interact with her. He was the only one who saw her, and only the back of her head and dress. 
The man told me he would never go into the cemetery ever again because he's terrified of something attaching to him. To this day, I feel like I can remember every detail of that story. It made such an impression on me. My friend and I were in a park one night, just after I graduated high school. In California, it is illegal to enter a park after dark, so we had to be sneaky about coming in. We enjoyed going in the parks and smoking pot and bringing hot girls. On this night, it was only my friend, we can call him Devin, and myself. We are both from a small town, very close to Santa Maria. For context, we were in a park where the street is extremely close, as in you could throw a baseball across the street if you had some arm strength. There was a new housing development being built so we were able to park on the street across in the park and walk in without looking suspicious. The entry path goes in straight for about 15 yards and then cuts abruptly to the right for 45 yards at a 45 degree angle to the road and then left again. There is a bench at this left where you can look down the trail both directions as it is ideal to watch for rangers. At night, you can't see the road from the bench since the brush and trees are way too thick. This road is sort of a side access road, although it does lead to another road about 100 yards away which ironically leads to a cemetery. Rumor in town is that that old cemetery was built on the hill, now containing the park. One night, my friend and I were stoned and laughing about some story we had just swapped when we heard a rustling in the trees. We were both sitting on the bench with our bags and smoking gear. We both fell silent and turned at the same time in the directions of the noise. We'd been there long enough for our eyes to adjust, so we could see in about 50 feet in the direction, with no light. It wasn't even 30 feet away. We both saw a small thing. It walked on two feet but it was hunched over, and was short but very fast. It was about the size of a 12-year-old, but it didn't look like a child, at all. It only stood about three to four feet tall. It was more gray than anything else. Its complexion was a lot like Gollum from the Lord of the Rings. We only got about a full two second look before it ran past us and toward the row where my truck was parked. I remember we both looked from the creature to each other and back in a moment of a shocked silence. We grabbed all our gear and ran back to the truck, ironically in the same direction the creature had run. We made it back to the truck and jumped in and forded the hell out of there. My friend lives about five minutes away, and when I dropped him off, I was still in panic mode. I made him look all over my truck, in my bed, under the toolbox, under the truck everywhere. There was nothing there, of course. I've been back to the park since, but never at night. My boyfriend and I hike a lot. We decided to do a hiking camping trip together. We live near the Shenandoah Mountains in Virginia. This happened in the summer of 2016. We had done an entire day of an amazing beautiful hike with a creek full of small swimming holes and rock formations. There was a nice waterfall. We stopped for the evening to set up camp. We had a tent and a hammock for sitting and swinging by the fire. We had a rather large fire that night, and we were sitting together in the hammock, just enjoying the stars and being out in nature. I suddenly got a strange feeling that someone was near us. I snuggled up closer to my boyfriend to try to let it go. He always get the creeps as you acclimate to being out in the woods at night. I knew it would pass. Well, it didn't. I couldn't shake this feeling. Suddenly I hear the dreaded twig snap off in the distance. I tensed up. My boyfriend says, 
Whoa, set her down there. You know there's animals all around us. I tried to tell myself he was right. But my gut was telling me to stay alert. I hear another snap and a large thump followed with some leaves crunching. This time, my boyfriend turns around too. He assures me it's probably just a deer. Normally, I'd believe him. Normally, I wouldn't be such a sissy. But the sixth sense of mine was ringing to my body. I told her I wanted to go to the tents. He didn't want to put out the fire though. It was bigger than we intended and would take a lot of water to put it out. He told me the tent is no safer than being right where I was. Just relax. Some time passed and the fire died down. I was happy to go in the tent finally. Well, it turns out my boyfriend was right about being safer where we were. We zipped up and started getting comfy in our blankets. We brought out his phone to watch some YouTube videos before bed. I hear loud crunching outside, like something was walking up to the camp. I looked at my boyfriend with wide eyes and he looked back at me. I was starting to see a little bit of this tough guy axe slipping away as we listened. His phone was still playing a video. I went to pause it and he stopped me. He said in a whisper, No, don't let it know that we know it's here. And I said, and What do you mean, it? We listened as the footsteps moved through the camp, then back into the trees. He said, Okay, it's gone. I think we had a bear sniffing around, babe. My heart sank. I was scared. I didn't want to be there anymore, but we couldn't just leave. We had to hike. Next, we hear this strange noise that to this day, we have never heard again. It sounded like the mixture of an owl's hoot, a bear grunt, and a scream, all in one. I jumped up with tears rolling down my cheeks. My boyfriend sat up, reached for his gun, and unzipped the tent. He peered out, with the end of his gun aimed, ready to shoot. He didn't see anything. We heard it again, but from a different direction. The hoot, grunt, scream mixture. Again, he pointed the end of the gun and saw nothing. I told him to shoot. I was in full-blown panic, tears rolling down my cheeks. He said, shoot what? I don't see anything. Getting frustrated with me, I think, because I was so scared and he wasn't able to alleviate it. I told him to come back to me and we just laid there awake all night. The very first sign of morning, we got out of there. I was too scared to do anything alone, so he had to come with me to pee. Our eyes were scanning all directions. Suddenly, a decent-sized rock came flying through the trees and hit our tent. My boyfriend ran for his gun and yelled, We've had enough of you, show yourself. Another rock flew out in the same direction. My boyfriend fired in that direction, but nothing. He fired two more, nothing. We skipped breakfast and packed everything up, and we hiked the hell out of there, and we refused to go back. I don't know what was out there. I don't know what that noise we heard was. I know the owl sound and that's definitely not it. It was similar, but it just was not an owl. I just don't know what was out there with us. I am a motorcyclist, and I ride and explore all the time. Recently, I traveled down an abandoned state highway that runs adjacent to a very large river. The road has not been maintained in many years, and travel on it is only possible by motorcycle or four-wheeler. I have had a previous very disconcerting encounter in this general area when I was younger. The area is quite wild and is a state park now. 
the area was inhibited by both Native Americans and later 18th century settlers. I stopped to enjoy the view of the limestone river Bloss. The bluffs rise at least a thousand feet in a very steep incline. I am looking up the bluffs when I see a bit of cotton or smoke floating down the bluff. The smoke was odd. It didn't roll or change shape. It came down the bluff slowly by a circuitous route. But it seems like it was heading directly towards me. The smoke or cotton thing actually began to make me nervous because its orientation remained the same. The top stayed on the top, the bottom on the bottom. It arrived at my legs, floated up directly in front of my eyes, and instantly disappeared. What the fuck? I looked all around to see if cotton or smoke was anywhere else. But of course, it wasn't. It was just gone. I decided to leave thinking that that was really, really weird. I travel further down the trail, a few hundred feet, and quite absurdly, I see a fairly large teddy bear sitting a hundred feet up on the bluff, mostly obscured by dead vegetation. This is just too weird. But I have to find a way how this stuffed animal got here. I climb to where it's located and find what appears to be a toddler's empty toy box and 50 to 60 toys attached to the ground by stiff coat hanger type wires. I looked over to a clearing very close by. There were the remains of a campfire with a tripod made of cut tree branches. At the top of the tripod was a fishing line which held something that had been burned by the campfire. By the campfire was a partially burned orange long candle, fishing line on a spoon, and a cheap knife. I instantly just knew, don't touch any of this stuff. I looked up at the limestone, 50 feet above the campfire, and someone had painted on the rock with spray paints, a red and black pentagram with a devil face. I left, and hopefully nothing followed. I have no idea what that spell was intended for, but as I said, I knew it was not to be touched. I also have no idea what floated down the hill and just disappeared right in front of my own face, but I'll never go to that state park again. This story starts with a group of my friends and myself going backpacking in Yellow River State Park. Six of us were backpacking through the hills during late fall, so there was a lot of dead sticks and leaves all around, yet not very many other backpackers, until we came across a couple of guys heading the opposite way. As we came close to them, they stopped and told us that we didn't want to go into the valley as they were there for the last two nights. We asked why not, and they said that they heard people talking near their tent in the middle of the night, even though they were the only ones there. My friends and I shrugged it off because we ourselves have drunkenly wandered around at night exploring and targazing. We continued down into the valley and set up our tents. There was two of us to each tent, Three of us brought firearms just because we were kind of paranoid and would rather have them and not need them instead of not having them and needing them due to previous experiences. We get all set up and break out our liquor and cars and play a few games in front of the fire before we decide to call it a night. One of our friends passed out in front of the fire and didn't want to wake up when we tried, so we decided that we would let him stay there he would make his way to a tent when he was ready, and we ended up going to bed without him. All of a sudden, we are woken up in the middle of a semi-drunken slumber to our friend screaming at the top of his lungs, high-pitched and everything, so we all jumped out of our tents to find our friend yelling, Who the fuck was that? We had no clue what he was talking about until we saw his face. Now... You know when your friend is the first person to pass out at a party and you doodle on his face with Sharpie? Well, apparently, 
some stranger was doing the same thing with charred wood and ashes. The problem was that he had an upside-down cross on his forehead and a pentagram on his shirt. I'm not religious at all, but I was kind of freaked out. We all ended up going back into the tents, but I don't think any of us got much sleep. Then, at about 3.30, we started to hear rustling in the woods around us. It seemed to be everywhere, though. Then we heard a voice say, Give him to us. Now, I was freaked out and loaded around as my pistol. My friend seemed to jump the gun. Yes, same trigger-happy friend. And fired around from his twenty-two into the air. I then hear people running away from what seemed to be all around us. Needless to say, at first light, we packed up and got the hell out of there. We contacted the county sheriff's office and told them what happened. They simply told us that there was nothing they could really do besides take a report and the good luck if they could. When I was younger, there was a park near my house that was close enough that I could walk to it by myself. I was 12, about the age I was allowed to go straight from school to the park as long as I texted my parents first. So, one day after school, I decided that it would be a good idea to go chill at the park, and I texted my dad that I'll be home at about 4.30. The whole time I was there, it was very empty. Most parents were taking their kids to after-school clubs and programs. Most of the time, I was spent playing on my Game Boy Advance, so I wasn't very aware of my surroundings. The time passed quietly. Not much happened besides pedestrians passing far in the distance on a nearby main road. I did notice, however, that there was somebody walking towards me. It appeared to be a man very tall but thin. He wore a black hoodie, as it was October. And it gets cold, pretty early here. But, he also had a baklava on. This fact, and something about the way his walk was, was more of a slinking. With his shoulders shrugged high, and his hands deep in his pockets. It looked like he was looking into the ground, when I figured, he wouldn't have seen me yet. There's this cool tunnel that is a rarity in parks. It was two six foot tall walls about three and a half feet apart, connected by five and a half feet up by the monkey bars. It is rare to see because it is very concealing and teens or druggies could possibly abuse this concealment to get up to trouble. Luckily, our town was small, so it was there for me to hide in. One strange thing about the monkey bar tunnel is that it wasn't angled to let a lot of sun into it, pointing more to the north to south instead of east to west. Due to this, it was eerily dark inside of it. My heart was beating fast because the more I thought about the guy, the more off he seemed to me. Eventually though, I realized it was about 4.25, and I had to be home soon. And I also realized I was probably psyching myself out. I was climbing up the sort of rungs at the bottom of the walls that served for steps for shorter kids, and my head slowly cleared the wall. I looked off in the direction I had seen him, and figured by now, he should have at least been along enough that I shouldn't be able to see him past the cluster of trees down the road. I climbed the rest of the wedge at the top, and sat on the wall facing the direction he had gone. That's when I heard a rustling sound behind me. I turned with shock and slipped one of my legs catching between the two bars, leaving me hanging upside down. When I saw it was there, my blood turned to ice, and the sharp cry that escaped my lips from the fall cut off sharply, as if I were a cut in the throat. There stood the man, kneeling down facing partially away from me, reaching into what looked like a ratty drawstring bag. I didn't move after I saw him, but the way he tensed up, I knew he realized I had seen him. 
he stupidly, but continued to, hesitate look around. Apparently, he decided it was too risky, because rather than try to shut me up, he simply ran off in the direction he came from initially. It was at this time, I was able to fully pay attention to the sensation in my leg, and also, take note that both my phone and Game Boy had tumbled out of my hoodie pocket and into the ground, and far from my limited reach. As it turns out, the man probably could have stuck around for a while. As I dangled there for what felt like ages, I cried and shouted for help. But given my compromised position and the fact that I was between two walls in the middle of a park, nobody had come to my aid. It wasn't until about 4.45 that my dad drove to the park looking for me. He actually missed me on the first pass, but when I saw his truck, I struggled to lift myself a bit using the tunnel-like walls and called out to him through the, his open window. Luckily, he heard me and came over to untangle me. He was immediately calling my mom to let her know he was going to drive me to the hospital and to meet us there. He also dialed the police to tell them what I had told him after he asked me what had happened. But ultimately, since I couldn't see the man's face, there wasn't much they could do to find him. My leg ended up being fractured on the center of the shin, and the bruises were growth puppy lumps of green and purple. The leg injury was bad. But what's worse is when I think back, I could still see the man in his bag clearly, including some of the bag's contents. Poking out of the bag were zip ties, the heavy-duty kind for temporary car repairs, along with what looked like to be some kind of cloth and plastic which I presume could be some kind of knockout drug. I have to consciously avoid thinking about what else might have been in that bag. So, when I was 24, I had gone down to Newtown Battlefield State Park in Elmira, New York, with an ex-girlfriend of mine and one of her friends. We had spent the day exploring and visiting all of the sites that had information about them with little signs. It was really cool. It told us all about the battlefield and the old wars that had been there. Apparently, it had even been visited by George Washington and other notable historic figures. It was fascinating, even for someone who is into history like myself. Anyway, the paranormal part. So the sun had been setting about an hour or two prior when we settled into our cabin. We started our campfire. Now I would say we had a beer and we did smoke a little bit, but we had only had one beer each and we were all just rolling up our first little joint. This all happened, so intoxication wasn't a factor as to something all three of us had seen and heard. It was dark along the pathway, on to the other side of the cabin. I heard footsteps coming up the walkway and quickly stashed the illegal leafy substance under the camping chair. So as I put it away, my ex and her friend both heard steps and looked away. When they looked over, they couldn't see anything. But we did make out some eyes. It seemed to be whipped by the distant campfire. So the noise walked right past the side of the cabin and continued on and to the left side of the cabin and stopped once it got to the side of the cabin we were sitting on. So I thought we were busted as I hid the weed under my chair and I asked, is there anything I can help you with? But I got no reply at all. I could make out eyes that were glowing in the distance but I couldn't see anything else. So in front of my girl and her friend, I grabbed the flashlight I had in my lap and turned it on. I went to point it at the eyes, but before I got the beam to the eyes, it had turned and seemed to have continued its path. As I hit where he would be, there was nothing but the walking noise continuing down the path. We spent the rest of our nights in the cabin too freaked out at the prospect of seeing and hearing something all three of us experienced. I've only ever experienced a handful of paranormal events in my life, and this has to be the one I question the absolute most.
but I also question it the least because I wasn't the only person who experienced it.